Um, as Keegan said, hi, my name is Ryan Petrick. Um, obviously, I work with the Flames and the Lynx uh, in, outside of our SBL seasons. Um, everything we're doing today is half-court defensive concepts. So um, we'll splice in a bit of how we run our zone defense, uh, and then we'll spend 40 minutes or so on man. Because um, I've seen I've seen plenty of these clinics where we do man. I've never really seen defensive breakdowns for zone. So we'll teach that as well. Um, Keegan's informed me that, no, I told Keegan I needed like 13 people if we're gonna do zone, and Keegan got me nine. So that's Keegan's fault, not mine. I got you back, buddy. <coughs> um, so yeah, there's that. Um, couple of asterisks with always that we show you. This isn't how you have to do it. So don't walk out here saying, oh, but Ryan said this is how I have to guard a stagger screen. This is how I have to guard a dribble handoff. It's not. There's 20 ways to guard a non-ball, 10 ways to guard a dribble handoff, etc., etc., etc. This is how we do it, based on our league, our personnel, our beliefs. So what kind of team do you have dictates how we do some of this stuff. More importantly, what kind of league are you in dictates a lot of it. So what would work great in under eights clearly won't work against Steph Curry. Um, and the other part is that what is your goal defensively? So what's the checklist you're ch trying to go through? So me, myself, I'm very containment orientated. So Rocco Men's SBL this year went from, I don't know where they were in 18, but we finished first in two-point field goal percentage, or opposition two-point field goal percentage, and first in three-point opposition field goal percentage, but seventh in steals, because I'm very containment orientated. Whereas the season prior, I think the guys were 10th in opposition two and three-point field goal percentage. So we really want to make sure we've got a hand over shots. And part of that's obviously, we got some long wings so you can play defense and Brad Robbins helps, et cetera, et cetera. But we were very containment orientated. We didn't want to give up a high field goal percentage. But that meant we also didn't get a lot of steals and runouts. So what kind of coach are you? What kind of players do you have? Um, what kind of league are you playing in? So don't walk away thinking this is how I have to do it. This is just how we do it. And we've had some success um, doing it this way. So any questions, any of that? No, nah, cool. If you do sing out, obviously we'll answer a lot more questions at the end, but hopefully I'll tick off a lot of these questions you'll have as we go through. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is our zone defense um, and how we do it. This is, a lot of this is stolen straight from um, Rob Beveridge. So I got this off Bevo back in 2011, I think it was, uh, 2011, 2012, when I was with the Cats. Um, and they broke it down into five on four, into eight on five. And since then we've tweaked it a little bit based on our personnel, based on the fact the game's changed a bit. So, and we'll hopefully take off a lot of those rules in this five on four. So <clears throat> first off, I need to get colors, hopefully. So good job. Um, so I need to get five offense on the outside of the three-point line. So let's get black in offense. So two corners, two foul line extended and top. And then other colors, I just need the outside four in the zone. So you want to set that up for us? And then one ball up top. Cool. Is that, we got nine exactly. Perfect, so ball up top. So the outside, all we're trying to teach to start with is the rules on the outside five offensively. Uh, and how our outside four in the zone would do it. So if we just found, if we put in all five at once against the eight, there's just too many rules. So we try and break it down a little bit. So our outside four in zone, our two guards, one's always gonna have the ball and they're gonna work in tandem. So one of you will need to declare the ball and the other one will need to declare the nail. So we don't care too much about the ball going to the wings as much as we are, we're trying to guard the high post and the two short corners. If you can get the ball there offensively, you'll kill most zones. So we don't mind it going around, it can't go in. So one will declare ball, just come back a little bit, my man. And then, so yep, declare ball. And then the other defender will just shade the high post. I don't need you to face guard it, but I certainly just need you to have an arm over it, ignore, trying to deny that easy pass in. So that's pretty simplistic. Our outside two, our forwards, we want to come right out. So. I can get you out here somewhere. Perfect, and then the same on the other side. So again, what kind of bigs do you have? This year with the Lynx, we have Iman Stafford, who's six, seven. So we're gonna push our wings right out. If you've got a midget center, you might wanna suck in a little bit. But if our priority is ball and the nail, it just means our guards are gonna have a hard time getting to wings. So we bring our forwards out, and that way on the pass, Guards are working tandem, so you'll now get the nail. No, you can't get them both. So go back, nail, and then, sorry, I don't know, number seven, this will be you now. Yep, so they'll work in tandem. So again, throw it back to the point guard. You'll declare ball, you'll declare nail. 
throw the other side. Again, we'll play, so you can't guard both, it makes some sense. And we'll play to that, so one will always guard the nail, one will always guard the ball. Our rough areas are foul line up are guards, foul line down are forwards. So, guards is pretty simple, throw it, play. From there, we want to have our forwards, you're in charge of getting to the wings. Because clearly if Seven's been told she's got to guard the nail, she's never going to get to a wing. Same deal on the other side. So, throw it for a second. 12, you need to arrive with a hand over the ball as you're coming. And then more important, once that's dealt with, you've got to be in charge of the bounce of the corner because there's no rotation if it goes there. This will clearly become the forwards. So come back to the point guard. So, ball, nail, throw it to a wing. Forward arrives. And then as you bump off, yep, outside arm. So as much as we can, yep, we'll play that way and then outside hand in the passing lane to the forward in the corner. If they really want to get it there, it's got to go via the roof. A bullet is an open three and you die from that. Make some sense? Cool. Forwards are also in charge of the bounce back pass. So throw it. Now, declare ball, declare nail. As you're running that way, throw it straight back. See how our guard's never going to get back? So our forward's got to be in charge of the bounce back pass. So again, play it. Seven come across, ball, bounce, throw it. Now you're in charge of the right back pass. Make sense? Throw it the other side. Now, yeah, if, if you can get there, mate, no, no, but if you can get there, go, because again, it's above foul line. Bounce back, and we play out of that. Make sense? So let's just see this five on four. I need to declare ball, obviously, if I've got it. And then again, arrive with a hand, bounce back into spots. Scoop. Use your voice. Okay, hold up. But see how they're whizzing it from corner, from wing to corner? So again, my closeout, if I'm a forward, throw it back to my point guard. So I'll take your spot for a second. So again, I'm up and out, throw it, I arrive, but I'm, infl I'm not letting it go there easily. Try and get it there now. Yeah, but throw it to the roof. But if it, that's gonna be me as well. I can't come back. I can't arrive like this and watch it sail across my face because I'm not bringing my center out. Make sense? So forwards, arrive with a hand, no easy pass to the corner, deny it with a hand. Scoop. Good. Better. Stop. Go back to six. Where's my guard? Guard. If someone's got to get it. Good. Play. Good. Stop. It's a guard, foul line up. You've got to say foul line and up. Make sense? Good. Play again. Okay. And if you don't talk, you're going to die really quickly. So defensively, someone's got to declare ball. Someone's got to talk in your team. If you ever watch a really good team play defense, all five of them don't shut up. If all four, and you've never done this before, I assume, <laughs> as you can see, so you're going to die pretty quickly defensively. So that makes some sense. Can I get four coaches in, sorry? So I just need to get um, same setup, ball up top. And then I need to get a low post offense, low post offense, high post offense, and Reese, I'll have you play center defensively if you don't fall over. Good stuff. So we're now making eight on five. So two coaches in the short corner. Are you going to play the nail for me? Perfect. Yep, so just nail, Reese, come higher. So, and again, we're getting mixed up with colors here. Obviously, at SPL, Wobble, Lynx, we'll have red and gray, red and white. So it's pretty straightforward. But you can see my outside five, and we've just shown you the outside four rules. Now we're just adding the center. So what will happen now, again, forwards come out. Good, so influence the pass away from the high post, that's fine. Throw it to a wing. It's the outside four, we all know what we're doing. Bounce back, yep, and again, if we can help it, we don't want the ball to go inside. So I don't want the bang, bang pass, but once I've covered that, I don't mind dropping back in and shading the low post catch. But again, what I'm really after now is ball high. If it does get to the high post, from there, our guards, you'll fan out and get elbow and elbow. Our forwards need to pinch in 
because as you've seen, or without even saying it, straight away I've turned and faced the rim. So my forwards have got to pinch in for the high low. And more importantly, my center's got to get a hand over the ball. So come back. Ball, fan out, play. Reese a little bit higher. So Reese's job in life here is that on the catch, he's taught as soon as he catches it to turn and face the rim, slash try and find big to big layups. By the time he does, Reese has to have it come over and have a hand on the ball. You sag off a little bit and declare ball, great, catch and shoot, blow by, high, low, etc., etc. So back out, match up. But he's always going to catch it back to basket, obviously. So throw it in. By the time he turns and faces, Reese has to have a hand over the ball. My guards fan out, my forwards pinch in. Now, ideally, and it's hard, eight on five, just go one more step. I don't want to get stuck on the inside because turn and screen. So, other way. Yep, perfect. Now I've got no one to get to the corner. So, ideally, we're on the high side of it. But again, eight on five, hard, hard to organize. Ball back out. So make some rules with that. Next one is obviously the low post catches. So throw it to a wing. We play, we bounce back. So Reese will come across a little bit. Yep, your job would be to deny the high post. So offense can't move, it's eight on five. We don't mind too much if it comes back high, but it can't go easily into the high post. So that's that. On the ball, we would like to try and keep it on the sideline as much as we can versus playing flat and watching it whiz from side to side, because that'll get you killed. Same deal, back up top. As much as I can, I don't want to play it flat, because now the ball can go from side to side. So as much as I can, go back here. So my man in white, try and keep it sideline. And then as it comes high, number seven would try and shade this side of the floor and force it back there. Because if it goes from side to side, you can see the back three shifting from side to side to side. Eventually something goes wrong. So as much as we can, our guards keep it on a side. Back to 18. Now, the low post catch. We did this differently this year. So before with Bevo, we would always play, just throw it in. We would leave the center alone, and my forward would get back to, back to baseline, and then dig, stunt, recover, stunt, recover, try and get it out. Play. Back out here. So my forward was here first, I go back to point guard. This year the instruction was throw it to a wing, throw it in, forward turn and blitz it, and we put two on the ball and we get a trap. My forward get to split line, and then you'll need to get on the low side of the big. Makes sense? And now I've got two on the ball, a safety, one pass away, someone guarding nail. And that way we at least found a way to get a trap into our zone. Um, and again, personnel driven. So if I had midget wings, it would struggle. But this year we had Travers, Beard, Caleb White, who are all, Greg Hire, who are all 6'7". So we had some decent, number 91, that was a six foot seven guy who could run and jump. So we had some length into that trap. So again, it worked for us this year. In previous years, that would never have worked. So ball up top. Ton of rules. I just want to walk through this. So again, pass, hold it for two seconds. Pass, hold it for two seconds. See how you go. Let's play. Good. Good. Blitz. Good. Yep. Play, play, play. It's fine. Declare ball. Forward. Yeah, so again, it can't go from corner to corner. What I would also try and do as much as he can the only combo I've ever seen, ball here with six. So I declare ball, yep, shade the high post. The only combo guard I've ever seen play throw it from side to side and run, for hit 18 and keep running my man in white. The only combo I've ever seen do that well was Brad Robbins and Damien Martin. And that was back in 2012, 2013. Those two boys, obviously they're elite defenders. Those guys could just fly. I've never had another team be able to do that. I've seen teams try and do it and just be awful at it. But Mardo um, and Bobby are crazy good. So as much as I can, I try and keep them on the same side. So throw it here, shade it. Yeah, guard the nail, but then throw it. And then you would go again. So you try and stay to your side. Just try and simplify it a little bit for them. Make sense? 
So let's go again, eight on five, see how that looks. Declare ball, let's go. Good, good, play. Good, good, blitz, good. Yeah, so stop, stop. And this is, again, we've gone really quick here. High post catch, I can't have two on the ball because turn the other way. I got one trying to guard three. Now in a game, one of those won't be there, but it's still one on two. So as much as I can, I fan and leave Reese one on one. Makes some sense. Back out one more time. Scoop. Hold up. Yep. So, again, the ball, we generally find the ball won't land there and stay there too long. So, we try and have this spot here just so they know their rotations. But generally, in zone offense, we find this guy gets it, it's a catch and shoot three and it's gone. So, we try and avoid like the rules. Clearly, we'd probably rather it go baseline. But this guy baseline drive, I reckon I see it twice a year. So, again, we don't, I'm not trying to gloss over the question. It's just the reality. We just don't see it a lot. So, whereas high post catch, high low, or low post catch, big dive for a layup, we see that 10 times a game. So, that's what we're trying to deal with the most. We good? One more time. Good. Blitz. Yep, so stop. Go back to the short corner catch. Yep. So, you would face guard here. Yep. And we play out of that because in our argument to our guys when they get good at it is that we can't make this pass to the corner because again it's eight on five so generally speaking you wouldn't even be there so if they've got a short corner catch in offense they'll have high they'll have nail they'll have rim. so we try and tell our guys if you do catch it there you can't throw it back to the corner make sense one more time play from there good blitz good Good. Fan out, fan out, fan out. Good. Play. Blitz. Good. Good. Stop there. Good. Not bad. Does that make some sense with what we're trying to do with it? Any major questions that coaches you find? Thank you. So you can jump off. Any questions with that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so like I said, that's the first year we've done that. So we've always gone, so if I'm a forward, I'll bounce out and arrive with a hand, and then I'll bounce back to the corner. And then if they threw it in, I would play bum to baseline, dig, recover, dig, recover. This year, personnel driven. So Travers, Beard, Caleb White, go and blitz it, six, nine center, six, seven wing, high wingspan. Again, our argument to our players, if they're gonna make it pass out, it's gotta have air time. So anything with a bullet, doesn't matter how good we are, we're going to suck. So if they can force a bullet, a, a lob pass out, then Bobby or Bulf would have had time to go and arrive. So if you can buy some time on the pass, you'll be okay with it. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, but what we found is that no one else was doing it like that. So teams were seeing a random trap in zone for the first time. And therefore, what's going on there? And we didn't zone a hell of a lot. So because we zoned 5% to 10% a game, and with a trap that we didn't see anyone else doing, it was really random and weird. And therefore, when it did happen, teams didn't have an offense for it. If we ran it a lot and everyone was doing it, then there's going to be problems. Yeah, so personnel driven more than anything else. Any other questions with that? No? Cool. So, let's get to man. Again, basic zone stuff. Man, I need to get um, a pair offense and defense, uh, lane line extended, and then a pair offense and defense out where 29 is. So, give me blacks and whites or blacks and yellows. Cool. So, sorry about the jer jersey changes. So, again, what are your rules on the ball and one pass away? So, ours were, we're no middle as much as we can. So lead foot, lead hand, whichever foot and hand is closest to half court, that's the one that's up, therefore no middle. And then one pass away, we're in what we call a shrink. So I'll grab your spot for a sec, man. So I'm one step off my man, or girl, and then I'm two steps towards the ball. So again, our priority is that you weren't driving through that gap easily. 
Um, back when I started playing, we were in this, and that's great, but now you just drive and go for a layup. So we wanted to keep that field goal percentage low, so we were in what we call a shrink, that we could play this slightly closed. So if you do make that pass, I can arrive a little bit easier versus go back. If I'm really open, throw it. You can now see that foot's really got to turn a full circle to get there. So you come back. So in a shrink, slightly closed stance. And then again on the pass, I need to arrive with a hand over the ball as you catch it. And then as she catches it, you're now in my shrink. So play. So match up, sorry. And this is like pre-season training session one. Is we're trying to get, because this here will form drill 98 at the end. If we can't get this bit right, the rest of it's irrelevant. So, have to declare ball, no middle. That's, is that a hand over the ball? Looks good. Yeah, and players, as we had this today at Lynx, a girl doing this, ball, well tomorrow night, that's Planeta going whatever, and just rising up and shooting a three. So, a hand over the ball, that will affect the shot. And then again, wide, low, Make sure she can see bodies, throw it. And what we're trying to get, do is get their talk going. So I'm declaring ball and I'm declaring gap. Make sense? So back and forth, hold it two seconds at a time and play. Let's go. Good. 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 Okay. So, so again, just trying to make sure they understand that as the ball gets moved, they've got to move. They can't throw it catch it, and now my big fella goes, okay, oh, I better move now. Well, come finals, Perry Lakes have gone straight through that hole and laid it up and we're out of the finals. So I need to make sure I'm there on the catch, not there a minute and a half later. So that's what we're trying to do with on the ball defense and one pass away defense. Can I get the same setup on the weak side of the floor? So I'll get a black chest, man. So if you want to jump for a sec, so yellow on D. So if you just want to jump on base on for a second. Thank you, mate. So on the ball, and I'll quickly glaze, gloss through this just because we've done this before in another clinic, but so you understand. Um, on the ball, no middle, hand over ball. One pass away, I'm in a shrink or in a gap. Same again. So again, see how you're more than one step off your man? Yep, so come back. Actually, put your feet next to, next to this guy and then go one step backwards and then two steps towards. Good. So again... And then our basic premise to our guys was, if six passes it across the floor on the catch, can you arrive in time with a hand? If you can't, either you're too slow or more than likely you're too far away. So you need to be able to arrive with a hand. Come back. So ball's done, one pass away is done, two pass away, at least one foot in the paint. So I've got help. Again, ultra conservative coaching, throw it. And then three pass away, all the way to split line from there. Now, again, we do a ton of one-on-one -on -one drills, so we don't get caught in rotations. But our general rule was three pass away split, or at least one foot on the split. So, in other years, especially in the girls when we didn't have shot blocking, we would bring all the way over to the strong side. Once we got Maddie Allen, we came to split line. In the guys, we came even further away. So, again, largely personnel-based, but at least one foot on split. Make sense? For now, ball with me. Ta. Line up on the back on the uh, backboard. So four yellows. And then hold hands. We start like this just because I this is much more how a game works. If I throw it out, run and find your matchups. Quick. So that's not too bad. But see how they ran to their positions? Early on, guys and girls just naturally run to their man. Well, that's not where we're meant to be if that's where the ball is. So the point of doing it like this, back to the backboard, is that our assistant coach would throw the ball wherever he wanted. Go. And they need to see how he adjusts his stance. So he started running towards help, and they went, no, no, I'm two pass away. I've got to have at least one foot in. So now they're getting used to closing out, not to their man who hasn't got the ball. They're getting used to closing out to their position. So that's that. And then from there, pass. I have to hear... Stop. I have to hear ball, I have to hear gap, I have to hear help. So ball, gap, help. We good? Play. Yeah, help, help. 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 Good. Help. 
good, good, stop. And from there, we had 20 guys. Defense would rotate into offense, a new four would come in, and we would churn through that pretty quickly. So at least they're all on the same page. So that's our basic positions. Um, from there, you can find that course from last year, which has the pass and cut defense in as well. It's exactly the same, it hasn't changed. Um, pin down defense. So this is what we have done differently. Um, so keep the wall for a second. So offense, guard to guard pass, sprint to screen the block, walk your man in, cut up by and catch it where she was. So again, pass and screen down, walk in, set your man up, cut off high, easy enough, sprint to screen, walk to cut, quick. Same again, pass and screen down, set your man up, up top, good. So stop, that's the offensive side of things. How we guard this defensively, this, the change has been throw it. So again, first and foremost, as always, jump to your gap. Because you don't always know that he's going to go and set a pin down. So get to your gap, slash, as he does, she might just drive. So I need to be in my gap first and foremost. Now, sprint to screen. So stop, stop. So I don't even want to, and I know we're walking through. So we call it open up. So open up and see the whole floor. And then open up, let me through. So make sure a lot of younger players are like that, and they're just attached to the screen, which then causes a double screen for our cutter's defender to try and get through. So it's open up, let me through. And then again, biggest gap, and this is what comes from Sandy Rondello. So Katie Rabesery gave me this, is that we teach 12, where's the biggest gap? So if 18 goes shoulder to shoulder off this screen, stop. Well, there's clearly no gap on this side. So the biggest gap is here. Come through it, and we're through. Whereas if we run this drill a while, go back to the start, and once we rep it and rep it and rep it, they start taking shortcuts, as players do. Set your pin down, stay in the corner, and then just start cutting high. Stop. But again, we would always teach our players to go through the middle of it, or turn and set a pin down. So again, just flare, you catch and shoot out there. So again, clearly the biggest gap now is on the other side. So again, just cut straight up. The biggest gap, arrive with the hand. Okay, so screen as defender, open up, let me through, give me a choice. Cut as defender, biggest gap. Where's the biggest gap? Now, all this stuff that we're teaching you here is the general principle. Every now and then we'll run into a team or a player, like a Steindl, like a Marshall Nelson, who just will destroy this. We need to have counters. So that's all fine. Um, and that'll guard 80 to 90% of our league. Every now and then we run into a pain in the backside. That just doesn't work. So throw it, set a pin down, stop. So top lock, I'll take your spot for a second. Um, so this is what we had to do to Nelson in round three. So he came off three straight pin downs, come. And we had really good guys guarding him, locking and trailing it, hit it rise up and shoot, six, seven wingspan, cash, six straight points, we lost by three. So the tweak was we went to top lock. So go to the start, no, no, not you. So you're Nelson, you're Steindl. Again, top lock defensively is that I'm gonna sit on the high side of it and not let you get to the screen. So I'm trying to sit in between, just say your screen's at the elbow. I'm gonna try and sit on the high side in between the cutter and the screener and not let you get to it. So now, how do you use your pin down? So the natural reaction is fine, I'm gonna basket cut. So cut, and that's taken away the jump shot. Defensively, what are you gonna do? You'll probably need to sag right off. So now we've got Nelson under control. Now you'll probably hit the big for a catch and shoot elbow jumper or whatever it is. We've gotta give something up. So back to the start of it, back to 18. So most players in the league will be fine. Open up, let me through, biggest gap. Every now and then, you've got a good player who you might need to lock and trail on, that's fine. Every now and then, Steindl or Nelson are starting to kill us, we're gonna to top lock it. And I'm playing on the high side of it, forcing baseline, yep, that's fine. And then from here, once I've got it back under control, go back to your own. If we give that up, we give that up. But that's not the best player in the league, the best shooting guard in the league, that's not their offense. So again, every now and then we've got to find a counter to what's getting our backside kicked, if it's not too late. That makes some sense. Cool. Any questions with that?
No? Good? Cool. Uh, staggers. So, same action. I want to get a full bore reverse. So, throw it, throw it. Two screens away. Walk your man in. Come off two. Take the top spot. 18 pop, 6 pop. Again, throw it, throw it. Staggers. Walk your man in. Come off two. 29 pop. 18 pop. Got to, where you, how do you get lost? <laughs> so again, this is the offensive rotation. Throw it. Staggers. Come off it. Good. Pop, pop. This offense is pretty straightforward. Now, again, so not my life story, but so I did 10 years of the women's, and then this is the first year I've done men's. We naturally changed this for the first time this year. So in the women's, throw it. Staggers. We would use the same pin down rules. Open up, let me through, give me the biggest gap. So ideally, she uses both of them and you shoot the gap on both. And we did that for 10 years and only one, I think it was Lyndall Gardner, got us twice in a row off that action where she would go back to the ball, go to the start of that. She was smart enough to flare the second one and our guard wasn't smart enough. So get to the second and pop and you kept trying to go to the inside, hit it. Lindell Gardner, bang, bang. They're the only two, and I'm sure there were more, but they were the only two that stood out to me over 10 years that we got killed on. Uh, and again, personnel base, we had Whitcomb. So if we were trying to guard Whitcomb like that, we would have got destroyed. So I understand it's personnel based, but in the women's league, that's how we got away with it for 10 years. Um, and again, one more time, set your staggers. If it was bleedingly obvious that she was getting to the second one and she fled, then our players were generally smart enough to figure it out. So we got away with that for 10 years. Ball back to the start. In the men's, generally a bit more shooting, a bit more length. We switched it. So throw it, stop. Now, on a stagger for the guys, we would lock, in, we would lock the first one, saying that you have to go over on the first one, and then we're going to switch on the second one. So now you've got to get to the inside of that screen, and you've got to tag 12 out, and 12 gets to the shooter. And we play from there. So, one more time, do it again. So, again, personnel based. We had a lot of like for like players. We had two guards that was hold up, hold up, hold up. Back to the start. We had two guards in our top, but one of them was Brad Robbins. Um, and we had two guys that were 6'9. The rest of our guys were all 6'5, 6'6, 6'7. So, we could switch a lot of stuff. If we had a whole team of midgets, this would hurt us. So again, personnel base was a lot of this stuff. Throw it, staggers, we lock and trail the first, and then switch the second, and stop. Do we call it three T's of switching? Touch it, talk it, take it. If you can get those three right, or at least two of them, you're a chance. But with no talk and no touch, you're gonna to get split, you're gonna get opened up, you're gonna get confused. So rewind four seconds. So we would literally have, so where's my first, no, my first screen set here. So lock and trail the first, and then on the second, we almost want Big Fella to push 12 out. Yeah, push her out. And that way I've at least got the touch, and that way you can't get split as easily. So rewind back to this second screen, I'll take your spot for a second. So as I, I've locked and trailed the first one, and then on the second one, I've got to get to the inside because his tendency will be to want to slip it and get me opened up. Rewind. So I'm trying to do a lot of teaching here. So I'm trying to get to the inside of it and switch. And again, the touch makes it a bit harder to split it. Make sure we get the communication right. So touch it, talk it, take it. And we play from here. Now, if you do want to try and cut, well, at least I'm not going to get face cut anywhere near as easily. I can hit him and ride him over. Make sense? So let's just see this. Um, set it up, I wanna go live. So, yellow. Lock and trail the first one, switch the second one. Play. Fine, hold it, hold it, hold it, sorry. I wanna go in a loop. So yeah, for now, just keep popping. So once they understand how it works, we'll start adding face cuts and everything else. But for now, offense, just run your pattern so defense know how to guard it. Play. Good, good, play, play, play. Lock and trail into a switch. 
Good. Get to the inside. Hold up, hold up. Guys, easy. We good? Play. Lock and trail. Uh, hold up, hold up. But see how the yellow screen as defenders are all attached? And it made it four screens for seven to try and get through versus open up and give me some choices. Okay? So again, pin down, open up, let me through. And then how do you want to guard a stagger versus a pin down? For us, lock and trail the first into switch the second was generally okay. Now, if a team put a gigantic center up top and that was a midget guard trying to switch onto it, we would run into some problems. But generally, we found that worked for us okay. So, any questions on staggers? No? Cool. Um, exchanges want to leave. Dribble handoffs. So again, there's 10 ways to guard a dribble handoff. Um, we guard it with two. So we switch it or we go through. So again, yellow, just go away for a sec. So all it is, dribble handoff. So dribble the defender, hand it off, quick, dribble high, reverse it. Same on your side. Dribble handoff, dribble high, reverse it. Same on your side. Yep, high, play, just hold up. So again, super simple, and we want to put this in so they know how we're guarding it, and then we'll combo it later. Yellow, come in. So, where there was a random dribble handoff, we just played what we call through, which is, again, I'm playing the ball, nothing changed. You choose a dribble handoff, you've got to let him through, and you're going to go underneath the ball handler, but above your defender and meet him on the other side. So what we call through. Cool, throw it, stop. You're gonna guard the ball, because that's a catch and shoot, three. Now on the dribble handoff, open up, let her through that gap. We good? Defense, fairly easy. Let's play that. Good. Good. Declare ball. Good, good. Reverse it. Not bad. Declare ball. Open up. Good, good. Hold up. You can start to see where that's going pretty quickly. So again, another two minutes of that, that'll be fine. So that's how we guarded most dribble handoffs. We would give the players that were smart enough some license to use their brain on it and like for like it just be a switch. But again, with those three T's. So touch it, talk it, take it. So I dribble hand off this side, everything's a green or a switch. You would come together yellows, but we're gonna switch it. So go back, a, I'll take 12 spot for a second. Actually, no, no, you stay there, I'll take your spot. So again, I can see it coming, you probably can't. We're gonna switch, stop, and I'm actually gonna push her out so she gets to the next one and then I'll get to the inside. What'll happen a lot of the time, come back, is that players, or maybe just mine, get lazy, switch. And, or, go back to it, this player just wait for six to come, so go back to the dribble handoff, but keep it, switch, and split it. So again, hence why we try and touch it, talk it, take it. Come together, talk about it, take it. Make sense? So right now, yellow, everything's a switch. Touch it, talk it, take it. Play. Good, good. 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 And stop. So, if these are the matchups we love, and that's fine, we try and what we talk about fixing matchups on the weak side. So, let's say you're the only guy that can guard 18, but we're switching handoffs. Do it. Good. Now you're stuck in your matchup on the ball side, but now, and separate. Throw it. Now, as this happens, stop. We try and fix our matchups. So, because the ball's on the weak side of the floor, I can correct any matchups I've got wrong badly on that side. Whereas, let's do it again. No, no, sorry, ball here. If you try and do it on the strong side, throw it. Oh, sorry, my bad. Ball back. Thank you. <laughs> Dribble hand off. Yep, switch. Yep, good. And now, if you try and find, if they try and do it now, or, and again, obviously this is four on four, 
If we added a post player and something, they try to fix it whilst the ball's over here, way too easy to attack. Versus throw it, make sure they're in the next action, and now fix it. And generally speaking, it'll be the person down the bottom declaring from the person up top. Because the guy up top can't see what's going on behind. Whereas the guy down the bottom, yo, LT, switch back, switch back. And LT will know what's going on. Okay, so that's how we would fix matchups slash switch or through in dribble handoff situations. Make sense? Any questions? Yeah, mate? So we use that, and again, back to the first bit where this is how we guard most actions. So if we've not told our players anything, we're a no middle team. But we run into a team that's got a lefty who can't dribble right to save his life, but right happens to be middle. Well, that will overrule. So <clears throat> if we've got a lefty, that forcing him to his strong hand is also baseline. Whereas if he dribbles right at all, it's going to bounce off his forehead. Well, we want him to go right. And hopefully our gap positions will cover that up for us anyway. But our personnel scout would overrule our generic zone defense. Our generic shell drill defense. Does that make some sense? Yeah. It's a, it's a great question because it's a total like contradiction. But the reality, our player scout outranks our generic shell drill. So, and what we would do during the week, we would have the other team's playbook. So on Monday night, we will start to break it down. And on Wednesday night, we will break it down in even more detail. So this is how this guy is going to come off this action. We would normally switch the stagger, but on this guy, we can't. Yep. So I would generally stick with force baseline or force, whatever your core principle is. So at lower levels where you don't have scout and film, and opposition knowledge as much, I would stick to your core. I'll, me personally, I would stick to your no baseline or we're a no middle team or we're a straight up team. Whatever kind of team you are would outrank. Yeah, so that's, that's me. Anyone else? No? Cool. So that's that. In terms of guarding like some combinations and then common actions, so let's quickly go through this. Um, so let's, do you guys know what flex is? Okay, cool. So can I get, I need one coach, sorry. I need a point guard, two bigs at elbows, yellow and black, two guards in corners, yellows and blacks. So you'll need to be in here now, man. Ah, uh, so can, Dianca, it's Dianca, right? Danica, why do I think I think it's Danica? Sorry. Um, hi. So, and then you'll guard 71. Oh, you're on black, are you? Good man. So, Horns flex, which is a fairly common action. So again, just the offense for now. So I so see your defense, your yellow. Oh, you shouldn't have come out. Throw it in. Yep, that's fine. And then again, some teams will curl it around, but for now, let's just keep it super simple. So I'm just trying to get you the flex action, straight down the guts, and then turn and screen seven. And then big fella, yep, so flex cut through, and then big fella set a pin down. Makes sense. So that's a flex cut action. Um, pretty simplistic. Running again from the start. And our teams will get to that flex screen a whole variety of ways. Throw it in, stop, curl on the outside. Now going straight 91, but reverse the ball to your other big. So 91. Yep, again, flex screen, cut off it, down screen. Makes sense. So there's that. Again, if you know it's coming and it doesn't really hurt you a lot, leave it. Or you can top lock it. So come back and do it again. So for now, just go the simple straight on the guts. Throw it in. And then from here, this back screen. Uh, so yeah, you're going there. Okay, all good. So if you're going to switch this, that's fine. So come off it and switch. But, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, take that. But then you would top lock the second one. So, rewind. So if you leave them with their own, that flex screen, go back and set your pin down, just come up a bit, my man. Then come up a bit. 
so we just got some space. If this is a if this is a weird combination, it's really hard, and come off this at, at pace, and 91 got rubbed out for whatever reason. Screen and turn has got to help for a while before you get involved again. Keep coming. And, but by now, go off your pin down. And now I'm really late. No, no, pin down. Now I'm really late to get back out because that flat first flex screen hurt us. So rewind back to 71. A common way more advanced teams guard this is to, is to top lock it. So switch the first one, but 91 will sit on the high side. Switch it. And now on your pin down, yep, again, top lock. Sit on the top side of the next screen. So now on your pin down, you've got nowhere to go. Does that make some sense? Not really. Let me clean it up. Point guard, set up again from the start. So throw it straight down the guts. Flex screen, which would be a switch. Stop, 91, come high. Yep. Flex cut, 12, take it. And now on this pin down, really hard for 29 to use that down screen. Make some sense? So that's what top lock would look like against a flex screen. Same as the pin downs you saw earlier. A switch to a lock. Pretty straightforward. It's a lot of time, Keegan. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. So that's how we would guard that flex action. So that's fine. Let's go. I assume you guys see a lot of two aside, three aside, or New Zealand flow. Like, yeah, everyone seems to see that stuff. So let's just get, um, we'll just go here with six. So thank you. You're good. Um, I just need offense and defense up top as a big, and then offense, defense, guard, offense, defense, guard. Everyone else jump out for a second. So I'll use yellows and blacks again. So sorry, I'll get you out for a sec. I need a yellow. Yep, that's fine. So two aside, three aside. So ball is a continuity offense. Um, Brisbane Bullets run a lot. Uh, a lot of SBL teams use it. A lot of um, NBL teams use it. They'll play for side on ball, and then they'll reverse it, stop, whilst they look for their big. Once, yeah, so there's a big on a roll, so I was the guard. So just one of you guys here for a sec. Quick, ball. So we're both black, set me an on ball. You'll roll, and then big to big, that's not on. You look across, you'll take high, I'll come back out, but there's this action here, so all I want to show you, jump out for a sec, is this side action. Ball. So how you deal with that on ball, do you ice it, and which we'll go through in a minute, do you ice it, switch it, show it, blitz it, whatever it is, into this three-man game, where on the catch, look across, I cut through, which then makes it pretty hard for seven to get six on the run as the next on ball happens, okay? So, an easy way to guard that, or an easier way to guard that, back to the start, is I'm going to switch those two guards. So, again, ball's over here. Seven should be more help than what 91 is. And now as it comes to here, stop. 91's clearly going to be one pass away defense, whereas seven's going to be in two pass away defense. So we would switch these. So, cut through. Seven, you take 29. And now 91 you're already there for the next action. Make some sense. Rewind a sec. And now if I want to be, I'll take your spot for a second, sorry. So again, I'm playing mine, but now what's our coverage? Are we trying to ice these on balls or deny them? Or are we just trying to show? But again, oh, we get great talk from low because I can't see behind me, but cut, switch, and now I can be really aggressive and take this away. Or I can be up much higher and throw it. And now I'm much easier for me to blue it as well. Because I'm already here. Versus come back and do it the other way. This is a problem when you haven't drilled it. Or you're running into a team that hasn't run it before. And therefore you don't know it's coming. They naturally just try... Sorry, match up again. If you just try and guard it in regular man. Cut. Next action. See how hard it is for Seven to get involved in this? Because she's so far away in help into the next action takes forever. Do that one more time. Like the common problem when this is run at pace and quickly and you don't know what's coming, you might be another step, but you're far away. Dribble handoff. But see how she's miles behind and now we're stuck in switching 
oh, we're trying to keep our matchups, but a uh, raw man's got a lob on the ring, etc. Versus tagging it and switching it. Our low guard stays low, switch, and I'm already there. Okay. Now there's offensive counters to that. So a good coach who knows the team's going to do that. We'll show you some counters. Stephen Black kicked our backside because he knew we were going to do it. And he kicked us. But if teams don't know that's coming, you're a chance. So that's how we would guard two aside, three aside in that pick and roll continuity, New Zealand flow type stuff. Um, so that's our main one with that. Any questions on that? Pretty easy. Uh, the last two I wanted to hit were, uh, so breakdowns. So what we were showing you before with the four on four stuff, so dribble handoffs, pin downs, staggers, pass and cut positions, it's all pretty bland. If you just run it, we're doing four and four dribble handoffs for three minutes. It's pretty dry, but I think the players need to know what it is at least. So early on, bad luck guys, girls, we've got to learn it. But once they know it, we'll expand it a little bit and then put it in drills and combination it together. So this year, for example, we played Joondalup, who ran an offense that had this three-man game involved in it. So Big would catch it high, and there was... Uh, so on this, cut through, dribble handoff, into come up top, into a pin down, come back out. Good, throw it. Into turn and post feed and then play what's next. So it was part of their chin series or diamond series. I think it was chins, ball back up top, big. So the guard would come off, go down low. So we would get to work our dribble handoff defense, which was through into hold up our pin down defense. No, no, we're not gonna switch. We're gonna open up, let me through. Cause again, you're a big. So I wanna keep big to big on a pin down, play into a post feed. And now we would put in our post feed rules, or if we were in a scout, we would put in June Lop's post feed rules, which I've told me I can't remember what they were. But whatever their post feed was, we would make our guys do the same thing. So they got used to that action. So let's try and do that at speed. We're gonna play through on the first one. We're gonna open up, let me through on the second one. And then the third one, post feed and speed cut. So you throw it in, you've got a speed cut and play. We good? Don't hurt anyone. Play. Good, pin down, good. Post feed, cut, cut, cut. Good, and good, that's fine, stop. I was more worried about you just banging inside for a layup. So, make some sense. So we would just combo these things together, I off a pin down into a stagger, into a dribble handoff, just so the guys would get some competitive nature about the drill, but we were still getting the teaching spliced in without them really noticing. So let's do that one more time. I want to get, let's tweak it now. So our two aside, three aside rules. So as you back cut, you're going to switch into dribble handoff, open up, let me through, into a pin down, open up, let me through, throw it, into a post feed speed cut. There's obviously a lot there at once. We would put this in after 10 weeks of preseason. So ball with me. So we're switching the, the back cut. We're open up, let me through, open up, let me through, speed cut. Play. Good. Good. Speed. Good. Good. Perfect. One more time. Ball. And now, as with everything, if you can make this competitive, so put a score on the clock, put a time on the clock, and they'll naturally go a little bit harder. Versus if it's just token three on three, it'll be a real malaise. You put a score in it, even if the punishment's two push-ups, they'll get competitive pretty quick. Um, defense, you know what you're doing? Yes? Then talk about it. Play. Good. 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 Not bad. Good offense. Nice hook. So... And again, if they started getting on balls, or that last bit where there was no easy post feed layup or anything like that, and it turned into a step up, we would have a rule for that as well. So there's a lot going on. Um, so that's that game. The last one you wanted to hit me on was the ice. Um, so pick and roll coverages. 
So can I get, um, yeah, big one here, um, six on the weak side, 18 up top, give me four yellows again. I'll flip 91 and seven, and then give me, a, give me yeah, so 91 play high, and then white shirt play six. So you don't have a number or a name on it, so you're white shirt for today. So <clears throat> our ice coverage. So to start with, we teach it two on two, we split it up into both ends, two on two, and then once they get good at it, we then start putting it in four on four and then five on five. So our blue, we ran this in 13, but we called it soft, where throw it, and soft, 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 seven would jump on the low side, and our big would sag in a mush slash drops slash whatever you want to call it, and seven, you had to use the screen, and you had to go over. And it was our only coverage. So, and it worked, it worked pretty well for us because it was pretty simplistic. In 14 and 15, we changed to blue, which is our ice, which now everyone does because it's gotten huge in the pros. So our ice coverage, throw it. First and foremost, so you're guarding it normally until you start running and stop. Sorry, I'm not trying to rip your jersey. But I want 12 to call this, and it's called ELC, so early loud continuous or early loud consistent, whatever you want to call it. But we call it early ELC. So I want to hear blue, 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 as loud as you can, as early as you can, as consistent as you can. And from that, as soon as our ball handler's defender hears that, jump out for a sec. I'm going from on ball defense to blue, blue, blue. I'm on the hip and I'm making, her, sorry, I'm in blue, I was in soft steel. I'm on the inside hip and I'm not letting her use the screen. Okay, so come back again. So it's throw it, just walk. Blue, blue, blue. I adjust and I'm not, see how the natural tendency is to jump in the general vicinity of the screen? Well, I've now given her space. Whereas I want to be aggressive as heck on it. And I'm literally top locking that top leg. Like you're not getting to that screen. I generally find when players jump to the screen or just put hand out, great players as we're trying to get ready for, will just knife that, split that, too much time and space versus uncomfortable, inner shorts. The natural reaction is, oh, I've got to get away from you. I've got to go towards the baseline, which is exactly where we want her going anyway. So that's that. Come back again. Bigs. Throw it and stay. Blue, blue, blue. But I'm also running into a drop coverage. So I'm not, I'm running down. So if I'm gonna be on the hip, I'm running down low. Now how low depends on the guard. So hopefully you've got some scout on the type of guard it is. Or you can use the generic just 50-50 in between the rim and the ball. But at our level, we'll tell our guys, she or girls, she's a shooter or she's a driver. Ultra rare, they're elite at both. If they are, they're probably not in WA. They're probably playing somewhere else, or you've got Whitcomb. So, on the hip, if she's an elite driver, we tell 12 to back right up. Okay, she's just not getting to the basket. Or, she's an elite shooter, come higher than normal, because she's not great off the bounce. So we want her getting under control pretty quickly. But our golden rule for wherever 12 wants to stand, is no blow buys, we live with a pull up. So if you take one or two slow dribbles baseline, seven go with her, you're on a jocks, you're in a pants, good. And if she can hit a pull up while seven is breathing all over her neck and she's not getting to the rim, she can hit that. Congratulations, it's worth two, we're going the other way. We just don't think they'll hit that a lot. It's not a three, it's not a layup, it's not a free throw. The three best shots in basketball. So on a hip, Blue, 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 stop. Seven's number one job is getting the ball. As soon as you bounce it, your job in life is to get it under control as quick as you can. Because the quicker you do, 12 can go home. 12 can only leave when one of three things happen. Go to the hip. I'll take ball handles, it's easier for me. So you can only go home when one of three things happen. You clearly get it under control. There's no need for you to be there anymore. Go away. Two, I retreat dribble or step back because that'll naturally get seven back in control. 
or three, I pick it up. They're the three times our big can go home. What happens a lot of the times, and you'll see it tomorrow with Tapaya, so guards are getting really crafty against this now, is that, being help, good, is that they'll get to here and hesitate, which means you think I'm done and you go home, and then they go again. And that causes problems. So the big can only go home on a pickup, retreat dribble, or it's clearly under control. Make some sense? Guards, ball. You're on a hip, as soon as she dribbles, get it under control as quick as you can. Make sense? So let's just drill two or three of those very quickly. Sorry, help defense, I'll show you in a sec. So ball comes from me. So blue, blue, blue. Good, perfect. Next ball. And again, quick, quick. Keegan's got me on a clock now. This Keegan doesn't like me. Let's play. Okay, and stop. But see how you ran to the screen? Run to your help. Okay, the second, and obviously it's pretty quiet in here. Our instruction to our big is you need to say it as loud as it will take to beat Geraldton here late August. So I'm not interested in trying to beat a bad team at their house in March. We're trying to beat the best team in the league in front of 2,000 people. We're trying to beat the Wild, Melbourne United at Perth Arena in front of 13,000. So, blue, blue, blue. Well, in a game, you're going to say it quieter again. So we want it as early, as loud, and as consistent as we can. And again. Good. And that's that. Easy enough. So, last thing we want to do with this. So, 71, you've now got a roll. So, throw it. The reason I like you so much is because it's a two-man pick-and-roll coverage. Your other three defenders don't have to do a heck of a lot if these two can get it right. If you want to show or trap, everyone else is flying around. And I want to try and stay out of rotations if I can help it. Other coaches love that. I, I don't. So I need you on the nail because you're now two passes away, right? This on ball, just take one or two casual dribbles baseline. Start to roll. So stop. And you weren't there yet. You're on a hip. So 12 is stuck in help. Who's got our roll man? Now, if you watch the NBA, if this doesn't happen, it turns into a dunk. So as he starts to roll, you've got to come and hit him and reroute him as hard as you can, as legally as you can, back towards 12. Now, how much can I hit him? Depends on your league, depends on your umpire. But back to there, and I'll play for a sec. So back to the on-ball. So I'm two pass away, on-ball. My nail defender start to roll. I need to reroute him back towards 12 and then bounce back. So, because otherwise, go to the on-ball and just stay here. Walk, so jump out for a sec. So you'll be in help. Yep. On-ball, start dribbling slowly. 71 rolls. Who's got that? And at the pros, that's a dunk. That's just an alley-oop at the rim in the NBA. So someone's got to tag the roll man. You'll hear that phrase all the time in the NBA. So early on when we're teaching this, we teach it where the big has to roll. Because... The general theory would be, if he's an elite pick and pop big, we probably wouldn't blew it, okay? Because it just gets you opened up. We only use this against teams that had bigs that weren't great three-point shooters. Whereas if we ran into a big, so Bunbury had a big this year who went 40% from three, we just switched it. Because we knew if we blew it, throw it, start doing baseline and pop, big fella, pop, we were never going to get back in time, okay? So we were generally blue against teams that had a genuine big. This was great for us against Junilup with Davis because he wasn't a jump shooter. He just wanted to roll and dunk. But we already had a big at the rim waiting for him. So that was that. If you do run into a big who randomly pops, throw it. You've got a couple of options. Um, so what we started to do, if it got really bad and you want to stay out of rotations, throw it and you come across and you go away and you start getting in a rotation that way, and your nail does it, to keep it simple, because your nail, if you rolled, your nail would tag it, and now if he pops, your nail takes it. We didn't get that too much, come back. Or throw it again. The other one's a late switch. So much more what the boomers did. Dribble, 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 stop. You can see that he's starting to separate, and you click, no, no, seven stay on the hip. So 12 can see he's starting to separate, and you're not gonna get back in time. 
then you would declare switch late. So now it's like, oi, switch. So blue, 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 green, green, change it. And seven would need to rotate out. Again, we generally didn't blue teams that had great pick and pop bigs. We generally blew teams that had a big who couldn't shoot. Therefore, we knew he or her was going to roll and we were fine. If it was an elite popping big, we would have a different coverage. So that's that. Any questions? Thanks, Keegan. Pain in the backside. Any questions of that stuff? There's a fair bit there we try to race through. Like I said, we glossed over the um, positions and the pass and cut stuff, which is pretty important. But that's already up online. So if you want to search for that, it's pretty easy on YouTube. On the Facebook page or whatever it is. So that's already there. And then that's some of the defensive concepts we use. Again, based on our philosophy, our team, our league. Um, different team. We Like I said, first time we've ever switched staggers just because it suited this team where it's never suited a team we've had before. Um, we've always, on, we've blued for two straight years in the women's because the league didn't have too many bigs that could pick and pop. Whereas in the men's, half the league can do that now. And as the game gets more and more pro and more and more bigs can shoot, blue starts to hurt more and more. So we started to switch much more, et cetera, et cetera. So again, the stuff I taught there, so half of that won't apply in three years time because the game will keep changing. Your team will keep changing. The league will keep changing. So that's some ways to do some of those things. Pick what's best for your team.